Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 9. This episode is titled Dream Weaver. Obviously, it's a kind of dreamer-centric episode, although it is a Kelly-centric episode as well. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was interesting. It was pretty solid on the whole, and there was a lot of stuff that has got people talking online, which is always a good sign. However, I don't think it was the craziest of episodes, it was kind of like a relaxed episode, kind of just get back into like the swing of things for Supergirl. I felt like last week's episode was a bit better, yes it did feel like a premiere because Supergirl was finally back and reunited with the team, it was so cool. And this episode was just more to do with like Kelly and to do with Nia. Also to do with Kara more so than Supergirl, although there is quite a few Supergirl scenes throughout the episode, it's more of a kind of reporting type episode slash, you know, what Kelly is doing with the kids in this episode as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this, and so I've got some notes, I want to bring up some points that we need to talk about in regards to this episode. So we have Intergang, they are referenced and they appear. And so we have one of the guys who works for Intergang, who is kind of leading this crew out of this special prison. So it turns out that a lot of this episode is about corruption, about trying to take down these people that have corrupted places that were supposedly good. Obviously, being in prison isn't the best thing in the world. However, even Kara wrote up a really good piece in the past about this place because she thought that it could do some good. And hopefully in the future, it does do some good. But it was corrupted from the inside, from the people working, and obviously the guy in charge was influenced by the people at Intergang. And so, will Intergang appear more? Yes, I do think. Like, why would they just reference them in one episode and even talk about their leader, but them to not appear again? So, I really do think that they're going to be like a decent presence throughout the season. Although, I have to say, it kind of does remind me of Agent Liberty a bit, like, hopefully it's not that sort of storyline where you have, like, an army of people surrounding, like, one guy, and, yeah, I just hope it's better than the Agent Liberty storyline. But anyway, so let's move on to the next thing, so Kelly helps out some kids throughout this episode in this home, there is about 10 aliens in this home, and one of the kids, who is the main focus for Kelly, is Joey. And so, I really liked the child actors in this episode, I thought they did a very good job. They really sold the performances, and it was quite touching seeing Kelly react to them, them react to Kelly. I especially like Esme, I think Esme is actually going to return in a later episode, because I'm pretty sure I saw her on some behind the scenes photos that people have been talking about online. But let's move on to the next thing, so, as I said, this is really a Kelly episode, even though it's titled around Dreamer. But Dreamer's stuff mainly is like one scene that keeps on repeating and it's pretty much the exact same scene, maybe even the same shots that have been edited differently. And so we're going to get to Neo's stuff in a minute, but we're going to continue with Kelly because I feel like that's the most important stuff this episode. So it's big setup for her becoming Guardian. Kelly gets given the Guardian helmet from Alex at the ending. This was obviously heavily teased throughout the whole episode. I think at the point when she turns up on the motorcycle, she jumps over the fence and hacks into the CCTV, you're like, okay, 100% she is going to get the Guardian helmet in this episode. And so it actually does happen and it's towards the end and Alex reveals that she asked James a while ago, like after she saw Kelly fighting in Crisis, and thought that one day maybe she would want to wear the Guardian suit, and obviously she's going to make it her own, and that's why it's going to be gold, and maybe we're looking for that next episode. I think that would be very cool if it does show up. I'm looking forward to it, but let's move on to the next thing. So still in regards to Kelly, she gets the alien care home owner arrested for abuse because she was able to hack into the CCTV and get it and release it to whoever was in charge of the place. And so Kara also does the same thing along with Kelly. They were working together a little bit, but mainly it turned into Kara's storyline in terms of the prison guy because they did have a past so-called relationship where, you know, she wrote this piece on him and, you know, I guess they respect each other. And so Kara does actually find out that this guy is extremely dodgy. William uses his CIA contacts, which obviously is a big MacGuffin. It's like, Okay, what information do you need? Let's ask William and William's CIA friend who we've never met 
he's just going to give you every answer you need to tell that anyone is shady and so basically Kara gets this information and she ends up putting this guy in prison and locking him away because he is corrupting that prison. Okay, so Andrea at Catco is still obsessed with getting number one. This is something that she brought up last episode and has been banging on about it ever since. And she obviously is very obsessed with getting the Super Friends in an interview. William finally gets an interview with Supergirl in this episode. Obviously, this is Kara doing Catco some good because she can tell she's going to get shouted at more and more if she doesn't provide or if William doesn't provide for Catco with Super Friends content and so that's where you get William talking to Supergirl in an interview and also Kara speaks out at one point throughout this episode about how bad Andrea's approach is to journalism and the fact that she just wants clicks is rather ridiculous because she doesn't really care about what they have to say as long as her team gets an interview with the Super Friends and obviously she does have the angle of Oh, she wants to expose who they truly are and probably their secret identities and she's going to come closer and closer to that throughout the season but it's just coming from the wrong angle it feels like she's just there to exploit them just because they are public figures however William does make a point towards the end of the episode about how important it is for them to get interviews with people like Supergirl because people look up to Supergirl and they actually listen to Supergirl and so they will tune into the TV and you know, go on Cat Coast website and they will actually listen to the message that she has to say because Supergirl does say important things. And so it's actually a good thing if you look at it from William's perspective and I think Kara comes around to that at the end of the episode. Okay, so in regards to the Supergirl content this episode, we have her going around with Martian Manhunter a lot of the time because they are chasing after the inmates who have supposedly escaped. And so they have a couple of run-ins and then it turns out that the gang go missing for a bit because Intergang is a bit wary about like Cara Danvers digging into everything and Supergirl getting pretty close. And so it's revealed that they're going to be killed off. But Supergirl comes to the rescue in the end and is able to talk to the guys who are being forced to work for Intergang who have been utilizing their powers. And so one of the aliens is from Obscura or that is his race and... There is a bunch of other aliens with different powers. It's a pretty good team that they are able to put together. And the main character that we're with is named Orlando, who is the brother of Joey, who Kelly has been with throughout most of the episode because she's been trying to help the two of them. And she was the one that asked Kara for the favor to look into it. And this led Supergirl to finding all of this. And so, yeah, they do have a couple of cool confrontations between Supergirl and Martian Manhunter and the team. And there is a couple of good scenes. I thought Orlando was pretty convincing. But let's move on in regards to Nia. Because this is the Dream Weaver episode. It was heavily hinted that this would be a Dream Heavy episode. Although there is quite a few Nia scenes throughout the episode. It feels definitely more like a Kelly episode. But in regards to Nia's dreams. They keep on repeating. And as I said earlier. It seems like maybe they use the same shots. It did feel a bit repetitive how many times we came back to the same exact dream, so I don't know if that necessarily 100% worked, but it was interesting to see Nia kind of figure all of this out, and the fact that she's actually duped at the end by Nixley, and so Nixley says to Nia in this episode that she is supposedly stuck inside Nia's dream, but it turns out she's probably manipulating her. And so this is the ending scene, so Nia hits the owl and she is waiting essentially for her mum to be back for a day, that is what Nixley promised. And it was good to see Nia using her brains, like, it's obvious that something is up with Nixley, like, why is she showing up in her dreams, what is her true motivation, and how on earth is she stuck inside Nia's dream? And it seems like the way that she words everything seems to be like she's been here forever, but we know she was in the Phantom Zone, so she 100% is manipulating her. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how Nixley actually escapes. This is definitely the way that she comes back to the real world. I don't know why she was in Nia's head in the first place, because she was literally hanging off the edge of Kara's spaceship the last time we saw her. So I thought that she would just, you know, arrive and she'll be on Earth and she wouldn't be stuck in someone's dream. But I guess that's just the way that they're going with it. But overall, in terms of this episode, there wasn't too much happening in terms of big, shocking plot points. But it was a solid episode, and I thought it was well done overall, and the characters are interesting. 
I did think the care home owner was a little bit forced. I felt like some of the lines that she was saying was pretty much just something that someone would write. And then I thought the prison warden was pretty good, actually. The kids were really good. I really did like the kids. I thought they did a very good job acting. And the rest of the cast, especially Azzy, I think, totally brought that A game. Also, Kara did as well, that being Melissa Benoist. But that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, but for now, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.